this is my Tough Stuff Stealth rooftop tent. Um, before buying it, I didn't see, there's like three or four videos on YouTube, that's it, but they didn't go into a whole lot of detail about the tent itself. Um, it's an aluminum hard shell top. It's got a uh, rack on the top of it as well that you can mount stuff to. Um, I've got traction boards up there now. I'll probably eventually add a solar panel up there as well. Um, these are supposed to be, and I talked to the company, these are supposed to be M8, and you can get an M8 in there, but I think they were M8 before they were powder coated or painted uh, because getting something to move in there was basically having to destroy the inside of it. So I may get some M8 bolts and then file them down and be able to use it up there. Some of the overall first impressions, it's huge. I love that it's huge. I'm six foot eight and I sleep in there just fine. One thing that I would improve on the outside is I do wish it had some sort of um, corner flap up there uh, like some other tents do so that if there's kind of sideways rain, I can still leave this open and have some airflow through um, because of the nature of a hard shell rooftop tent, there's no vent on the backside. So if it's raining hard, the only ventilation that you'll have is the actual front door. So that's not, not great. Um, but again, that's only in specific situations. Um, I do like one thing that this has that my 23-0 did not have is, you know, you have this kind of area near the hinge um, but this one has Velcro underneath of it and the flap comes down and like, you know, actually kind of secures it a little bit. Whereas I had a 23-0 Breezeway 62 and that did not, um, that was just kind of open and there was nothing you could do about it. Another thing that I would most definitely improve is the shoe bag is terrible. Um, I get what they were going for. I think it's designed to put your shoes in sideways instead of straight down into them uh, because this pocket doesn't go all the way down. It's a very shallow pocket. And um, if you have larger shoes or if you have you know multiple people in the family, it's not gonna fit in there. It does, it's, you know, it's got this like Velcro splash guard that goes over it. So that's kind of nice, but um, I do wish it was like a deeper, a deeper pocket like some other brands have. The other uh, kind of annoying thing about this, the Tough Stuff design is that their sail track that they use is just slightly narrower than every other sail track. So if you wanted to go get a shoe bag from 23.0 or CVT or whatever, it's not going to uh, fit into this track. And that's, it's, like a minor annoyance, I guess. Especially because Tough Stuff only sells, they don't sell a shoe bag, a replacement shoe bag for this tent, only for their other tents that have the wider sail track. So in the actual tent itself, so one, you see all this light because there's a skylight. I love that feature. That's that's pretty awesome. Um, I took out the mattress that came with this tent and I replaced it with um, iCampers, um, what do you call it? Four inch. I'll put the, uh, in, in the on the video and in the description, I'll put the um, exact mattress this is, but this is the iCamper. It's got like self-inflating foam, and then it's got air to top it off. Um, and it's supposed to be four inches thick. It's almost four inches thick. Uh, but two of them in here together fill up the space entirely. And I don't notice, you know, a gap. You know, I don't fall through the gap or anything because the gap is probably like my mid thigh. So it's not like where a pressure point is. Um, inside the tent, huge amount of space. I can sit up. Um, again, I'm six foot eight, and I can sit up um, perfectly fine in here. Another thing I like about this tent, it has 
all these pockets up here. I had the 23-0 Breezeway 62. It had zero pockets, not a single pocket inside. Um, it did have, you know, the exposed railing you could hang stuff from. Oh, and the, the other thing too, is this one has a built-in LED light strip up here and underneath of it, I'll, I'll try to remember to get a video of the underneath side. Uh, so that's really cool. If you have a USB, uh, any USB battery pack, you can hook it into. You've got your vents up at the top. Again, you know, you could close this off. This doesn't have to stay open. I realize this is going to be a little overexposed, but yeah, pretty awesome tent inside. Um, and again, I'm 6'8". I've got plenty of room, like more than enough room, you know, side to side, it's bigger than a king bed. I leave uh, pillows and blankets up here. It also helps too that the other, you know, the other thing about this, the, um, the self-inflating mattress pads is I can deflate them and the two of them deflated is probably thinner than the stock mattress you know, half of the stock mattress. So you end up with a few inches extra space that you wouldn't normally have um, if you just left the, you know, the stock mattress in it. So yeah, the underneath side, this is where the uh, LED strips are. There's one on each side um, that's controlled by the same one inside. It's kind of a bummer, you can't control them independently. Uh, you can't say like have inside on and outside off, but it's still nice to have something. This, you know, there's a zipper in here so that you, if you got the annex, there's an annex that they sell. And another thing too, you know, as compared to, I keep comparing it to the 23-0, but that's because it's what I had before. Uh, but this Velcro, and then it's got a cinch down strap. Um, inside here so you can keep it so it's not flapping around all night if it's windy. Another minor annoyance is the zippers are not double-sided. So if I wanted to say get my diesel heater and put the tube up here, I've got to, you know, kind of force my way in. Um, and then it's just, you know, it's a little bit more difficult to close, close it open. I can do it, but I really wish those were just a double-sided zipper. That would be a little easy thing um, that would make this uh, a little bit nicer. And I'll show, um, you know, I have a Nissan Xterra, so I'll show when it's closed up what it looks like on here. So I already closed the skylight, so there's a lot less light in here, so I apologize. But this is the difference between inflated and deflated for the mattress. It's like a, it's a drastic, drastic difference. And I'll show that all packed up here in a second. All right, I got both of these deflated to the pack up process. I'm film this the best I can with um, Skylights closed and stuff. So basically, see that uh, yeah, the gray space where it's part of the lid. Um, basically, just put that there. Get this up out of the way. There we go. All right, so one goes up there. There's plenty of room for pillows and blankets.
there's these little tension strings. There's actually, as it comes from tough stuff, there's one string and you got to walk around the truck to unhook it. But I turned mine into two so I could just hook it together and I don't have to make a second up and down trip. Same deal on the front, just tucking, tucking fabric. All right, and this is what the Stealth looks like on top of a 2015 Xterra or second gen Xterra. It is, um, you know, if you like really look at it, a little bit of a gap there. I personally, uh, with the front runner rack I have, I had to do these risers because my hands have to be able to get in here to um, tighten it down. And also having it up higher allows me to keep my side pool awning on the side just barely clears but it clears um you cannot do a 180 awning here on an xterra uh, because of the space limitations but so it does stick out a little bit and i'm also going to on the side i'm going to have um, a shower awning right here i just need to make kind of a custom mount for it to be able to swing out um, this is what it looks like from the front. And from an angle, it's not bad. Like the awning, you know, kind of fills in a gap on this side, so it doesn't look as bad. Um, on the other, so I mentioned as I was putting the tent away, one of the improvements I made was there's a tension strap that goes from the left side to the right side, and that just basically pulls the canvas in as you're closing the tent. That was one piece and it had like a, a lead on it um, to hang down and I didn't want to get up and down. So I just cut it in half and then put two connectors on it so that when I open the tent, I could just unhook it and I can hook the two connectors right onto the, uh, the rail right here. So I don't have to get up and down one extra time. The other thing I did is the, the tent comes with a metal it's like a bolt and then it's got a little thing right here that was digging into the rubber right here and it wasn't really keeping it uniform so i replaced it with 550 cord and it's a much stronger much tighter and keeps everything much more rigid one last note about the hard shell tent and this is not unique to the tough stuff stealth from what i understand this is just hard shell tents in general, but a soft top tent, you know, you had, you have to go around the vehicle 10 different times to get the thing set up or packed away, but it's enclosed. So there's a zipper that goes all the way around and keeps the inside, the inside and the outside on the outside. This tent has, and I guess what will vary is how much um, gap there is. Let me get a flashlight. Um, but this one's got a little, like a three quarters of an inch, almost a full inch gap right there. And I did have some, um, last week we had some snow and salt on the road and I did get some salt and grime that kind of made its way into right there, but it was just at the end of the fabric. So it wasn't, you know, too big of a deal. It was easy to just wipe off. Um, I would be concerned though, if you are storing this in a shed or something over the winter or whenever else you're going to have bugs 
you know, you're going to have cocoons and stuff up in here because that's just what bugs do. Um, so that would annoy me. Uh, but keeping it in the garage, it's not so much of an issue and using it a lot makes it not so much of an issue, but uh, something to consider. Uh, but again, I think that's, you know, that's every hard shell rooftop tent. That's not this one in particular. Um, I'm thinking about, I may be able to just basically get um, a pool noodle and slice off a section of pool noodle and stuff it in there. Um, whether that'll work or not, I don't know, but it might. Uh, but that's it. That's an overview of the Tough Stuff Overland Stealth. A couple minor things that I would change um, given the chance, like the double-sided zippers and having some sort of corner thing on the window, like a little bit of extra fabric uh, would make a drastic difference for all weather camping. Um, but I really like it, um, especially the size, especially with the improved mattress. The mattress that came with it um, just wasn't going to work at all. Um, I don't know who that might work for, but I'm a side sleeper and I'm heavy, so it's not going to work for me. Uh, but that's it. If I missed anything or if you have any specific questions about the tent, uh, leave a comment and I will do my best to answer it with pictures or text or whatever I need to. Uh, that's it. Thanks for watching.